With Sony's PlayStation 5 just revealed on June 11th, it's only fair to examine one of its most important predecessors and their contribution to what PlayStation is today. No, not the PlayStation 4, not even the PlayStation 3, but Nintendo's 1996 console, the Nintendo 64. Heralded as a gaming system that was as graceful as it was powerful, the N64 brought on a revolutionary innovation that not only inspired the design of the PlayStation 5, but all modern gaming consoles. Welcome to the sixth episode of Retrotech, the show where we dive into technological innovations of the past and analyze their legacies. I'm your host, Vexor, and I invite you to join me to find out why the Nintendo 64 is one of the greatest ancestors in console history. It was the 1990s. Nintendo entered the decade as the leader in the video game console industry, thanks to the release of the Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES for short. However, Despite the success of NES's 1990 successor, the Super NES, Japan's economy suffered from a severe recession that limited SNES sales. Adding on to this burden was market competition from longtime rival Sega and another much younger company called Sony. Pressure from all sides forced Nintendo into an obvious dilemma. Produce a new console or suffocate under market competition. Nintendo's attempt to revive their market dominance kicked off in the beginning of 1993 under the working title Project Reality. Project Reality's release dates were announced as early as August 1993, advertising that the console would be in arcades by 1994 and in consumers' houses by 1995. The development of the would-be N64 console was kept under wraps, especially its prototype controller. The secrecy was taken as far as hiding the prototype controller in a box while they used it. Whenever the developers were asked what was in the box, they joked that it was a new, innovative controller. A quote, bowl of liquid that absorbed your thoughts through your fingertips. Of course, that wasn't the case, but it was true that what was in the box would be an innovation in the console industry. On November 24th, 1995, Project Reality was publicly unveiled under its new official name, the Nintendo 64. Children mobbed Nintendo's trade show where the console was unveiled and they were excited to expect the console in stores a month later by Christmas. Unfortunately, they would have to wait a bit longer. The N64's release was pushed back to April of 1996. Nintendo reported that the software of their console needed polishing and that their hardware was experiencing some problems. Despite the delay, the hype for the N64 remained, reflected in the drop of sales of Sega and Sony's consoles due to anticipation of the N64. The loyalty of the fans were further tested when Nintendo announced another delay, pushing the official release back to June 23rd of 1996. Nintendo explained that they did not want to cause consumer frustration due to not having enough units manufactured by April. Regardless, the consumers grew impatient. Nintendo 64. So what's the big deal and why is Toys R Us already sold out? We have the answers. It comes as no surprise that Nintendo's new video In only its first day of release on June 23rd, the N64 sold 300,000 units. 200,000 units more than PlayStation's 1994 release day sales. In the US, 3.6 million units had been sold by the end of its first year. A quote from Lee Hutchinson, an employee at Babbage's, which is now known as GameStop, affirmed the launch's success. Quote, The actual launch was like nothing I'd ever experienced. Lines, screaming people, arguing customers, threats of violence. Forget merely selling out of consoles as they came in like the PlayStation did for a while. We pre-sold weeks of deliveries in advance. We sold out of consoles and games and controllers and accessories and strategy guides and even magazines that mentioned the Nintendo 64. Drop shipments of consoles were pre-ordered and sold before they even arrived and things got even more ridiculous as the end of the year drew closer. It was the Christmas of the Nintendo 64. Sony? Sega? Who were they? End quote. The Nintendo 64 was worth the wait. The success and incredible reception could be attributed to one factor. Its innovative new controller. 
the N64 became the first home console to pioneer a feature that is now standardized in today's consoles, the analog stick. The implementation of the analog stick was Nintendo's gamble to save their company. This innovation was not only successful, but also a gateway to a whole new world of video game controlling. The console was heralded for properly displaying how 3D game worlds should be navigated. The way the N64 handled created a new sense of immersion for players. For once, they could feel the movement on the screen. It was as powerful as it was graceful. Praise for the best graphics processing of the time. Home consoles that followed began implementing the revolutionary analog stick, including Sony, which released a PlayStation 1 controller with two analog sticks. To us, operating an analog stick is second nature, but consumers of the time needed to be shown the possibilities of this fancy new gadget. The Nintendo 64 accomplished this by being released alongside a game that is argued as one of the greatest video games of all time, Super Mario 64. It's the new leader of the video game pack, featuring 64-bit technology that produces amazing 3D animation, including zoom-in technology that might make you dizzy. Want a different angle? Just like most other platformers of the time, all of the preceding Super Mario games took place in a 2D world. The screen was flat and movement was limited to left, right, up, and down. The idea for a Mario game taking place in a 3D space was conceived by producer and director Shigeru Miyamoto more than five years before the Nintendo 64's release. Originally imagined as a game for the SNES console, Miyamoto reformatted the game for the N64 as 3D operation would best shine on a controller with a wider range of functionality. The full timeline of Super Mario 64's development spanned across three years. But by the time the N64's launch was only 10 months away, only 50% of the game had actually been completed. As a testament to how much importance Nintendo placed on a game's quality, especially one to be released alongside the N64, Miyamoto was unconditionally granted two extra months for development. Although Miyamoto's drive to make the game as best as possible was a huge factor in the N64's delay, Nintendo's president Hiroshi Yamauchi commented that the game's high quality was non-negotiable and that, quote, game creators can finish games quickly if they compromise. But users have sharp eyes. They soon know if the games are compromised. End quote. This uncharted territory of 3D game control meant that the success of the game relied heavily on the accessibility of Mario's controls. Development started with brainstorming on the game's camera system. It was eventually decided that Super Mario 64 would take place in a free-roaming 3D world. As a means for forcing players into boss battles, fixed path concepts were used intermittently. Take Bowser's Lair as an example. The addition of the N64's analog stick permitted players a full 360-degree range of motion, a first among other 3D games that had only allowed movement in relation to a fixed perspective. Additionally, small nuances allowed even more precise control over Mario, like how far the analog stick was pushed related to how fast Mario would run. Although the game was criticized for its lackluster camera control, Super Mario 64 was heralded as the 2D platformer killer. Paired up with the Nintendo 64's revolutionary controls, Super Mario 64 revealed brand new possibilities to the world of gaming. On the brink of despair, the Nintendo 64 console was the company's attempt to stay afloat in the rising waters of market competition. With their industry dominance at stake, Nintendo placed its bets on a risky new take on video game control. The gamble paid off. Not only was Nintendo propelled back into relevance, but the revolutionary analog stick granted Nintendo the badge for paving the road of how the next generations of games should be handled. With its 360 degree range of motion, the console navigated how 3D worlds should be developed, exemplified in its legendary game, Super Mario 64. As stated by the Grand Theft Auto series developer Dan Hauser, quote, anyone who makes 3D games who says they've not borrowed something from Mario is lying, end quote. Just like how the design of modern 3D games can be attributed to Super Mario 64, the design of modern video game consoles like the upcoming PS5, can be attributed to Nintendo's legendary console, the Nintendo 64. Thank you for joining me on this analysis of the Nintendo 64's legacy. 
My channel is about all things retro, so subscribe for more about artifacts of the past, classic mysteries, and stories from the retro age. Please do leave a like if you enjoyed, follow my ever-growing Twitch channel, and most importantly, have a phenomenal rest of your day.